Welcome to TYT Sports, everybody. Ben Mankiewicz, Francis Maxwell. Who's playing today, Francis? No one, and I'm out of a job probably in a couple <laughs> hours. <laughs> you're lucky you're here now. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so uh, we had the discussion. There were so many things that I didn't say in our conversation about penalty kicks. Me as well. Mostly it's that, no, you got everything you no, needed. I got a um, no, you, you really, you were kind of exhausting. <laughs> um, no, it's this, uh, it feels inauthentic. Mm -hmm. That's what I hate. That's the most of it. But anyway, so apparently uh, someone agrees with me. Yes. It's not a big deal. He's just the national coach of, uh, of the Netherlands, and he's just going to be coaching Manchester United next year, managing, excuse me, like, not a, it's not a big deal. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I got it. I got it. He's an idiot. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> we're talking about Louis van Gaal. <laughs> um, and after the semifinal loss to Argentina. Oh, they lost. Yeah, he's yeah. complaining. I got it. Oh, so, but sure. it, these aren't even complaints, really. That's the thing. These are rather thoughtful. Here's what he had to say. Um, we took those in penalties in an incredible way against Costa Rica. Of course, that was the game they won on penalty kicks. It should give you confidence, but the issue is you score the first one. I asked two players to take the first kick before ending up with Villar. I thought he was the best player on the pitch, so should have a lot of confidence. Just goes to show that it's not easy scoring in a penalty shootout. Now, the bottom of that quote, Francis, you could take to prove your point that yeah. it's not easy. But we do know it's pretty easy. It's 7 out of 10. <laughs> it's 72%. I mean, we, know, we, have a, we have an actual number on that. This comes from a story that he asked defenseman Ron Vlar to shoot first, which surprised people. Mm -hmm. But what's most surprising is not so much that he made that decision, was that two guys said no. What is that about? Yeah, that's, that's, that's insane. That was cowardly. Your, your coach asked you yeah. to, to go. And I get it. It's a little, I think this stuff is in you. Like, it's not, I get it. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm not pretending it's, the, but mostly the challenge is in whether you screw up. Yeah. Like, the goalie is just guessing, yeah, right? True. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, well, this is another thing. In, in that article, which is, I mean, it's a good point. I said to you along, I want to reiterate that you make a good point. You make a compelling argument. However, would, Van Gaal have had this conversation if Holland beat Argentina? I don't think so. Would he have... He, he said that it's about luck. Well, if it's about luck, why is he substituting his starting goalkeeper with one, one minute remaining against Costa Rica? He obviously and, doesn't believe it's all about luck. No, and, and, I, and of course it's not all about luck. Yeah. I mean, you'd be better than I would and, 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 you know, and Neuer would be better than you. Yeah. Like, I got it. It's, I'm just saying that there is a tremendous... Let's put it this way. When we say it's all luck, we're, we're, we're being hyperbolic. Yeah. There's a lot of luck involved. Yeah, there's a lot and, of and, and a better player, a by better at penalty kicks. And, and, and Van Gaal says he would have done it here too. Yeah. But he felt compelled to make the substitutions that he made yeah. during the course of gameplay, uh, mostly because of exhaustion. Yeah. Right. So anyway, here's the second thing he has to say. Uh, and talking about those substitutions. Uh, I substituted uh, Indy because he already had a yellow card and I had to mark Enzo Perez and was often too late. I thought he wasn't executing properly. So he made one substitution yeah. to help a guy from a yellow card and a second one because the guy just wasn't playing well. Uh, De Jong, I didn't want to risk. He might have been injured himself again. I substituted Van Persie because he was exhausted. Those are his three substitutions. He was unable to make the goalie change yeah. that he did the first time around. Okay, um, he continues. I think this match should never be played. Now he's going on to another yeah, point. This is, this is the third place match. I think this should be never played. I've been saying that for 10 years. It's unfair. We have one day less th uh, to recover than our opponents. Uh, he's missing the bigger point. No one wants to see it. No one wants to play it. The NCAA tournament here in America, uh, I think wisely recognized that nobody wanted to play yeah. Monday at five o'clock in a third place game yeah. after having their hearts ripped out on Saturday True. in a national semi -final. Yeah, I mean, I can agree with them on that point. I mean, to the certain aspect of, I think, Brazil probably, as much as people wouldn't agree, I think Brazil might have wanted to play this more than Netherlands in this case, because Brazil it, were trying to, to try and- It didn't look like it. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't look like it in the game, yeah. but they, were, they just had come out off the bite of an unbelievable loss. They might have wanted to try and get a little more respect back, whereas the Netherlands came off a, a heartbreaking loss and penalty kicks, which I'm sure I was awful to go I think they've had incredibly compelling reasons not to want to yeah. play in that. Netherlands, for the reasons you said, Brazil, because, they all, all nothing things. good can happen. It's not like a 2-1 win over the Dutch in this third place game wasn't going to lift the spirits of the yeah. country and but the I know, team. I know, I know, but the same aspect, did you see the stadium? It was still significantly, um, and a, a large amount of people turned up, That's which I didn't expect, especially Brazil fans. just wanted to drink. I mean, exactly, <laughs> and give them something to cheer about. So, But I, I agree with Van Gaal at this, in this aspect. They should at least maybe push it a day or so, because they, they can Why not have that game be just a shootout? 
25 <laughs> shots each if it's so damn exciting. Yeah, yeah that would be fun. <laughs> all right, I'm anyway, I'm, I'm being a dick. Uh, all right, Von Gaal's next thing. But the worst thing is, I believe, that chances are you lose twice in a row and a tournament where you've played so marvelously well and you'll leave as a loser after losing the last two matches. There's only one award that counts, that's being world champion. I like that because that's a thing that happens naturally in sports everywhere. You know, I made the NCAA tournament comparison about the third place game, but it just seems to apply here because one can argue this means this is this is the World Cup. This is every four years. This is this is these this is your country. Yeah. Playing in that third place game seems crazy. And you made a, a great point that like four years ago when it was Uruguay, yeah, it was thrill for them. Yeah. It was thrilling. Yeah. But it, for, but for teams like this, it was terrible. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we, the problem we have in sports in general is that you th the, think you think of Jim Kelly, you think of Marv Levy. Those are great uh, Buffalo Bills quarterback and Buffalo Bills coaches. Bud Grant of the Vikings. And one of the things you think real quickly is, oh, he lost four Super Bowls. Yeah. He's a loser as opposed to, he got to four Before Super Bowls, and, and, and he was a great coach, yeah. and it's hard to win. Well, I mean, do you, you think people it, are looking at Messi right now and going, you know what, he done well to get Argentina to the final because he did play well in the games right. leading up to it. No, they're thinking, right. once again, Messi falls at the last yeah, hurdle. That's a, that's a, sh that's a, sh that's a short-sightedness that we have in yeah, sports. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So he makes a point that the third-place game only adds to that, and now Brazil has compounded the 7-1 yeah, loss to Germany yeah. with a 3-0 loss. But you watch the Dutch players, the last point on this, they, they were celebrating at the end. Like They sure. celebrated their goals. They, they were happy to, to leave on a winning note. That's one thing I think it gives you a chance. If, you can, if you've just come off the bat of a heartbreaking loss, it gives you a chance to leave on a high note. Look, and some of these players haven't, aren't going to play in the tournament again. Like uh, this is, They left on a win. Yeah, yeah, I'm really talking about the mood beforehand. Once yeah, you start playing, I mean, it's just then you're then you're in a then you're in a game you love. Mm -hmm. I get the third place game. You can keep playing it all you want. Yeah, it's, a, it's something to bet on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, next thing he says: first and foremost, destruction is not the correct word. I don't think it's fair what you're saying. This was uh, in, in response th that uh, whether Romero had been an agent of destruction. Yeah. Uh, it's a very humiliating question to be asked, but then again, I didn't teach Romero to stop penalties and we were the club to bring him to Europe. He was a big talent and someone who has the qualities to do that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, asking these guys, again, when the save percentage is 72%, even the best in the world, at some point, they're gonna give up four in a row. Yeah. It's just, I mean, often, they would if they stop, if they had to look at 200 shots over a week, mm -hmm. they're gonna give up four in a row, maybe 10 times yeah. they're gonna give up four in a row in yeah. route to stopping 30 or 35%. Yeah, I think people are just reading into it too much there, thinking Van Gaal, I know he's a mastermind and he's very tactical, but they're just trying to trying to close, close stories out of that to be like, oh, did you coach Romero to save penalties? Was that gonna come back and bite you in the ass? Because people like stories like that. But I mean, as you said, it comes down to a lot. At the same time, I'm sure Romero done his homework, and when it comes to being a good coach, you have your goalkeeper watch videos on this expected penalty kick takers, what side they usually go to. I mean, good players will change it up, but um, there are some players that like to stick to where they go. So there's argument on both sides, but I don't think that uh, that was the right question to ask him after just losing um, yeah, the World Cup semi-final. Deliberately provocative. Yeah, exactly. uh, talking about Holland's overall performance in the World Cup, he says this, I'm not really interested in what people say about me or my team. It's a good thing if people are very positive, but the issue is, in a tournament like this one, you need to score one more than your opponent. We didn't create much. It's the most terrible scenario to lose on penalties. Yeah. At the very least, we were equal with them, if not the better team. It's a big disappointment. Let's go right to the next one. He says, we played a fantastic tournament. No one had expected us to make it through to the semifinal. Argentina are, I love you guys. It should be Argentina is. <laughs> Argentina are a top country with top players. We didn't lose against them, but the penalties are down to luck. Yeah. So I'm not just being like a, a you know a soccer hating ugly American because <laughs> I, as you know I, I don't I don't hate yeah. uh, I really enjoyed this tournament I love the World Cup but I'm not alone in thinking that penalty kicks are a crazy yeah. way to end this and it seems that I don't he didn't offer another solution and I yeah. realize another solution is complicated but the the head the, the the coach at Manchester United and the and Argentina says the same thing. Yeah. So the thing is with people that are coming out and saying it's unjust and it's unfair. I've been on the receiving end of losing on penalties and on the receiving end of losing on a golden goal. And I will tell you right now, and most people will agree, losing on a golden goal is worse because you have no rebuttal. You have no way to try and get back. I mean, once that goal goes in, you're done. Penalty kicks, if you start to go down in penalties, I mean, they can always change you. Have to, it is down to luck, but that's why golden goal was, uh, was took away. And I'm not saying that's your suggestion because I know you're thinking about other things, but a lot of people who have this argument are saying bring back golden goal. The reason it was, un, was took away was because, for one, it was unentertaining because teams would just sit back. They were too scared to go to each other. It, was, it happened in Japan and uh, they were like, right, we're done with this. Mm -hmm. There's no way. And if teams scored, the other team felt so hard done by that they just wanted to appear 
appeal against it. I mean, penalty kicks, as I said, one of my main points is if it was so bad, which, I mean, it, there are arguments on both sides, more teams would appeal against it, and I don't think there is enough teams appealing against it to make a substantive argument to change it. This is a big step for that because Van Gaal is very respected, but not enough teams appeal well, against you. it. I mean, if the result of a golden goal, and first of all, I wouldn't do a golden goal right away. I'd add another 30 minutes. I'd wear those guys into the ground yeah. before we'd get to that point. Um, but if the result of that was that a lot of guys just went around and they kicked it back and forth and they were too terrified and formed happened. that defensive wall, well, that's a problem, then maybe you need to do something about that. Maybe you need to change the nature of the ways game, game is played was, after, yeah. after 120 minutes or after 150 minutes. When it happened in 2002 in South Korea, it was one of the most boring tournaments anyone's ever seen. I mean, the people were just, it was boring because teams were playing so defensive and then with the golden goal added, it was scary to watch like teams like South Korea got off through and they got through the semis based on their, their ability to play, maybe just holding and hit maybe, quickly. Maybe a little officiating. A little officiating, yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah. All right, Francis, thank All you. All right, thank you.